Hello learners and welcome back to your own channel LIY English learn it yourself So learners today we are going to learn one of the finest poems of Nizam Ezekiel who was an Indian English poet This poem had been widely acclaimed and admired by everyone The title of the poem is Night of the Scorpion Before we move forward learners make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for the latest notifications your support motivates me to bring more and more such videos So we'll learn the poem in this video in English I'll explain everything in English however I'll upload another video of the same poem in Hindi I'll put the link in the description box if you want you can check that out too Now without further ado let's start our video As usual first we will learn about our poet Nizam Ezekiel as i said he was an indian jewish poet actor playwright editor and art critic we can see he was a multi talented person he was also awarded the sahitya academy award in 1983 for his collection latter day psalms now the poem is quite indian when it comes to its central idea and its theme The poem is written in free verse and it's a narrative poem. Now what is a narrative poem learners? Any poem in which the poet narrates any incident, uh, a story or an experience is called a type of narrative poem. In this poem, poet describes his childhood experience of one rainy night in which his mother was stung by a poisonous scorpion after which she suffered for hours together in unbearable pain. people from surrounding neighborhood kept visiting her they gathered around her and prayed for her recovery in this poem the poet successfully attempts to present the real image of rural india of the pre independence era now let us read the poem line by line and try to understand in detail the meanings of the difficult words are also given for your reference i remember the night my mother was stung by a scorpion Ten hours of steady rain had driven him to crawl beneath a sack of rice, parting with his poison flash of diabolic tail in the dark room. He risked the rain again. The peasants came like swarms of flies and bust the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. So the poet starts narrating his childhood incident that he still remembers when his mother was stung by a scorpion. that was hidden behind a sack of rice it had been raining continuously for several hours that night maybe that caused the scorpion to take shelter behind a sack of rice in the poet's house after biting the mother the scorpion left risking his life again when this news spread in the neighborhood peasants kept coming in large numbers Here the poet has used simile intelligently to compare the large number of peasants large number of people visiting with the swarms of flies it also reflects the peculiar trait peculiar quality of peasants in rural areas of india how people are so connected with each other they all come together be in the times of happiness or problems they stand together in unity So the poet says people kept coming to see his mother. They were buzzing. Uh, buzzing here means chanting. So they were buzzing the name of God. They were basically praying to God. They were praying that the scorpion might get paralyzed. Here the poet is referring to the scorpion as evil one. However, he is actually portraying the belief of the people. at that time people actually used to believe in rural areas that scorpion is an evil creature so all of them were praying for the scorpion to get paralyzed because they believe that the scorpion is an evil creature now let's move forward with candles and with lanterns throwing giant scorpion shadows on the mud baked walls they searched for him he was not found they clicked their tongues with every movement that the scorpion made his poison moved in mother's blood they said so as the poet mentioned that it was the time of night so people kept coming with candles and lanterns creating so many shadows that looked like scorpion themselves on the mud baked walls of the house they were all trying to search for the scorpion who had stung 
Now, why were they doing so? And why were they also praying uh, for the scorpion to get paralyzed? So basically, people were superstitious uh, in those times and they believed that after biting, the more the scorpion make movements, the more uh, poison will move in the victim's blood. So basically, they were all searching for that scorpion with candles and lanterns so that they could kill it. May he sit still, they said. May the sins of your previous birth be burnt away tonight, they said. May your suffering decrease the misfortunes of your next birth, they said. May the sum of all evil balanced in this unreal world against the sum of good become diminished by your pain. May the poison purify your flesh of desire and your spirit of ambition, they said. And they sat around on the floor with my mother in the center, the piece of understanding on each face. So basically they were all trying to find the scorpion to kill it and they were also uh, praying that the scorpion may sit still, it does not move much. They were also praying for the recovery of mother. They were praying to God to forgive her sins of the previous birth. They believed that the sins of previous birth gets forgiven with the suffering of this life or the suffering of this life decreases the misfortunes of next birth. So they were all actually trying to sympathize to present condolence, they were actually trying to give strength and assurance to the patient that the pain uh, the patient was suffering from will not be in vain. They were praying different kinds of things like may the poison of that scorpion purify your flesh of desire, your soul, your spirit of ambition. However, there was no relief to the mother. She was still lying on the floor at the center restlessly fighting with the pain and people were sitting around her and praying all kinds of things. More candles, more lanterns, more neighbors, more insects and the endless rain. My mother twisted through and through, groaning on a mat. My father, skeptic, rationalist, trying every curse and blessing, powder, mixture, herb and hybrid. He even poured a little paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a match to it. I watched the flame feeding on my mother. I watched the holy man perform his rites to tame the poison with an incantation. After twenty hours, it lost its sting. My mother only said, Thank God the scorpion picked on me and spared my children. So it was still raining and more and more neighbors were coming along with their candles and their lanterns while the mother was twisting and groaning and moving out of pain, she was unable to bear it. The poet's father, however, was a rationalist, so he was trying hard in his capacity to cure her. He was giving all kinds of powder, mixture of herbs and medicine. He even poured a little paraffin upon the wound and put a match to it, you know, to destroy the poison and to stop the poison to move uh, in the uh, body. Now imagine the terror of poet as a small child watching his mother suffer so much, watching the flame of fire feeding on his mother. So all these uh, things kind of reflect on the, uh, on the fact that they were, there was not a single person who knew exactly what to do or there was not a sensible person who would just give the right advice to the right thing to take the victim to the doctor. However, everyone was doing what they thought was right. So it reflects the ignorance on their part. It reflects their superstitious behavior and their backward thinking. They even called the holy man to perform certain rites. They believed that had the magical powers to cure the patient. And he was also chanting so many things. He was chanting incantation. But all this was in vain. Mother still had to suffer for 20 hours after which it lost its sting. And even after suffering so much, she just thanked God when she got well. She just thanked God that the scorpion had stung her and not her children. She was grateful that her children were safe. This last line is so touching and it speaks about the selfless love of a mother. Truly, no one can love you so deeply, so truly and so selflessly as your mother does. 
and we can see now and understand why this poem was highly acclaimed because it gives such a clear picture of the life of people they are thinking in rural areas of pre-independent india it successfully throws light on many relevant issues and themes of that time finally it touches our heart with the last three lines i hope learners you loved the poem and you enjoyed the poem you understood everything and if you like this video give this video a thumbs up share among your friends and subscribe to the channel thank you very much